So we're just going to take a look at the underscore each function. You can see that I've set up two calls here to underscore dot each. And the first one I've passed in an array of three numbers and then made my iterator function, just logging out the numbers. And then I've sent the second one to an object of three values, three key value pairs, with an iterator function that takes a number and the key. So if we run this, we get one, two, three in the first for the array, and then we get the number and the key for the object. So four, one, five, two, six, three. So this is the code that is in underscore for the each function. You can see there are a couple of variables declared up at the top. Uh, basically, the most important one is this native for each, which is the array dot prototype dot for each function. Moving into the actual function, uh, we get a couple of assignments here in the first line. What this is basically saying is that this function equals this, equals this, equals this. So in essence, this variable, that property, and that property are all equal to this function. Now the each function takes an object, or an array, an iterator function, which you can see over on the other page. In the first one we give it an array, and then we give it an iterator function. And the second one we give it an object, and then we give it an iterator function. You can also pass in a context. So moving in, first we're testing if the object that we passed in is null. But we're not just testing null because we're setting some type coercion using the double equals sign. So what we're actually doing here is testing if it's null or undefined. And if it is, we're just going to return and cancel the function because there's no object to run it on. The second if statement we've got here encompasses the rest of the function. At first, it tests if there's a native for each function. So if the array.prototype that for each exists and isn't undefined, then we'll proceed. And this statement on the right also has to be true. So in this case, we're taking the object that we passed in and testing the for each function on that object. And we're testing that against the native for each of array.prototype dot for each. We're doing this because you could define a for each function on this object that would not be equal to the array.prototype dot for each function. And in that case, so moving on, then we'll just call the object dot for each with the iterator in the context. If either of these are false, then we're testing object.length against a coerced value of object.length. So what this does is, if it's an array, object.length on the left will be a number. And object.length on the right is coerced to a number by using this plus sign. So number equals number. They'll both be equal and then the array will execute here. If it's an object, then this object.length will be undefined and we'll be testing it against a coerced value to a number of undefined. So it'll be object.length would be undefined, and then plus object.length would be not a number. So let's say we, it was an array, and we passed in an array. So then we go into this for loop, pretty basic for loop, set a variable i equal to 0, 
L is the object length. As long as I is less than L, increase 1 I. So for each of these values, we test to see if I is in the array. And then we call our iterator function. After we call that, we just return. So if we have an object, we do something very similar. We're going to call variable key in object. And then we're going to test to see using another underscore function, which is just alias to has own property. Basically, um, we're going to test to see if the key is in the object. So in this case, we have our object 1. So we're testing to see if this key is in our object, which it is. We'll go over the has function in another video, a little more in depth. And then we call the iterator function again, and we'll return. So that's it for the each function.